ladies and gentlemen, let us discuss cloud computing in this redgamingtech.com video. So cloud computing, of course, is going to be instrumental for not only the Xbox One, but the PlayStation 4. With the Xbox One, it's going to be using XBLC or Xbox Live Cloud to deliver things such as artificial intelligence, um, post-processing and whatever else. Meanwhile, the PlayStation 4 is going to be utilizing the Gaikai technology and that will be for things such as backwards compatibility. No doubt there are also going to be a slew of other services which are popping up as well, all promising to deliver games, very hot, graphically intensive games, to light devices, light end users basically. So in other words, things such as say tablets and so on. Um, there's been a recent interview with Christine Arrington and she is a senior analyst in the games group at IHS and she's been uh, discussing bits and bobs on opinions and so on on the cloud so I'm going to be uh, kind of reading out the interview and doing some analysis on it and so on as you'd expect. So I'm sure many of you will agree that probably the biggest issue of cloud computing right now um, is the latency, is the internet connections. Um, even if you take out of the equation latency just for a moment, an internet connection is not equal around the world. For example, some parts of America may have very good internet. If you live maybe kind of more out of the way in a more remote location, then you're going to be having a slightly worse internet connection most likely. Same thing in Europe. If you live out in the sticks, you're going to have some issues. And it's pretty much around the world as well. Certain countries just have far worse infrastructures when it comes to the internet. And so the question is, how much of a hindrance is that going to be? Um, is it going to be enough to the point where well, there's got to be some significant roads made forward. She replies and said, I think it's too early to tell. Most major console markets have reliable speed internet connections for catalog games such as Sony has planned with the PS3 library. Streaming to the PS4 with those connections will be satisfactory for console gamers. What remains to be seen is how graphic heavy new generation titles will perform. It's easy it is telling that no one has made a firm commitment to stream new releases via consoles. I don't think there is an answer yet to the question on how and how well these will perform. So, end quote for now. I'm sure some of you will be aware of there has always been discussion on the next generation. No, we're not talking about the PlayStation 4, we're talking about the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox, whatever the hell they call it. Um, the Xbox 1080, let's say. Um, what what are they going to? Well, you know, is it going to be an actual physical box? Is it going to be like a very light um, piece of hardware that just fits in your room, like a client side system, or is it going to be all streaming or what? For example, um, the developer behind Tekken, um, his name is Harada, actually believes that there won't even be a console after this. It will all be service-based cloud. Meanwhile, other developers aren't quite so sure. They believe that the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation uh, 5 are going to continue the cycle because they want Sony, I mean, just for example, by all means you could switch this out and interchange it with Microsoft or whomever. They believe that it's going to be a situation where Sony do not want to get rid of the hardware control. So the question is, what does she think? Well, there is merit to this concept. There has to be something that is provided a console that cannot be provided by a service based in the cloud. That could be many different things, and eight years from now it's hard to say what that might be. Things that come to mind are interface technologies such as augmented reality or display concepts such as virtual reality. For the last few cycles, the focus has been on graphics capabilities. This time around, it's on interfaces, media services, and multi-screen access. Even if Microsoft and Sony move to the cloud services, it isn't inconceivable that, other, that another hardware maker could come along with new capabilities and launch a new console in the market. She also added that um, once 
consoles launch, PCs quickly outpace them in graphics and processing capability. If it can be compensated from the cloud, it takes some of the advantage away from the PlayStation from the PC. So pushing that side of cloud gaming probably isn't going to be that high of a priority in the beginning, but it's something more important as the consoles age. Now I know what you're going to say out of quote, Mark Cerny um, is just one of those who have been saying, well, it's not really ideal. Um, there are many different issues with it. And she does say, there are merits on both arguments. I believe that this is more of a matter of timing. Right now, uh, doing much of the heavy lifting on the server side would be very expensive, probably not a lot of infrastructure with high-end GPUs deployed. So Cerny is right in that sense. However, Microsoft is also right that eventually can be offloaded to the cloud and future-proof consoles. So the question is, okay, what about the PS4 versus the Xbox One? In her opinion, what's the what's the you know where does everything lie obviously it has a more powerful gpu it has gddr5 memory blah 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 and she says i don't think the console specs come into play much when processing is done in the cloud if either were to be implementing a hybrid approach with some processing done locally it might make a difference but even then the whole point is offloading processing so it doesn't really make that much of all of a difference she also added that the way things are shaping up, it doesn't look like there'll be one platform. Everyone is trying to create their own environment and infrastructure. So developers will be trying to work around the PS Cloud environments or the Xbox Cloud environments or the iOS or the Android or the Steam or the Origin or any number of potential cloud gaming entrants. While so many are built on basic PC architecture, there's some specifics for each environment that make them unique. It could make development even more complex if in the multiple cloud envi environments uh, where they were to deploy games, end quote, and their short interview. And uh, this is from Gaming Bolt. So, what are my opinions on this? Well, I, I, I've been fairly vocal. I just have issues with uh, cloud-based computing for a number of reasons. I don't like it because I'm very old school and I like the hardware in my home. I like being able to download titles, I like digital titles, but I like the processing to be done um, right there and then. And I think for the foreseeable future we're not going to have a situation where the regular internet is going to be fast enough or without latency. Maybe um, there are obviously technologies being worked on to improve this, but for right now it's nowhere near ready. And the thing is, however, it's extremely hard to predict a years from now. Regarding this second, however, I mean, to be fair to Microsoft, they are putting a lot of money in Azure technology. To also be fair to them, they've been very successful. Azure is actually kicking the butt of Rackspace and Amazon, at least in the tests I've seen, it's actually significantly faster, it has faster read and writes, it's processing a little bit quicker. But the bottom line is, it's not exactly um, without harm. And okay, let's, let's ignore the processing done on the servers, on the cloud, right? The problem is it's the sending and receiving of data, and that's not instantaneous. And sure, on some games, it can be really good. Um, I see a lot of potential in games such as Skyrim. I see potential in titles like MMOs. I see potential in games which may be for background, but... The problem is, for things where it has to sync to a particular frame of animation, so let's assume, just for example, let's make this really simple, and let's say that a game is running at 60 frames per second. Well, the thing is, first of all, that's a crap ton of data to throw down the pipe at the same time, especially if you're doing this in 1080p, so a high definition. Secondly, um, you get gamers, um, or should I say games developers like John Carmack, and they say 60 is the bare minimum that we should re be really aiming for. In re reality, uh, we need something like G-Sync technology or 120 hertz. The, the butter zone would be 120 FPS with G-Sync technology 
or an equivalent g-sync of course just for those of you who are not familiar with it the basic premise is that let's assume you have a display that um, is 60 hertz let's just make it really easy and let's assume that your gpu um, is only capable of running at 47 well then you've got an option you can either sync it to every frame in which case it's going to go down to like 30 fps or you could disable vsync and so you're going to actually have screen tearing while basically the monitor is waiting for the gpu and that's just an issue but effectively speaking g-sync eliminates this it will actually refresh at the same time as a new frame of animation is created so pretty much the the ideal situation would be a, you know something like 120 hertz 3d display um it would be you know g-sync and we would be getting situations like that and we're not really in a position to be doing that on the cloud uh, at least for now um, who knows in the future Guy games like fighting games are just going to be like issues i mean fighter games I don't know if you've ever played online with like a fighting game, but it's still not exactly ideal. And that does have some, um, it has some level of guesswork on what you're going to do. But some games are just pretty abysmal. If you've got a bad internet connection, you're playing stuff like Marvel vs. Capcom or Street Fighter, good luck hitting links. I, I actually wish you really good luck because it's just not going to go too well. If you start to become. Um, more familiar with it then it's not so bad it becomes slightly less painful but really difficultly timed combos it's just not ideal um, for things like background processing it could be nice but you know I, I, I just don't think we're there yet I think that the cloud is going to be nice for things such as I've already gone through this stuff some of this stuff before but I think it's going to be really nice for things such as um, AI I do think it could work for AI. I do think it could work very well with things such as dedicated servers. But I just don't think we're in the situation where, you know, we're not going to have latency issues. I mean, I've seen some tests done um, from Microsoft and so on on the cloud. And, you know, it really depends on whereabouts you are because even with CDN content delivery network, okay, the closest server... This, I'm just going to use the UK because obviously I'm more familiar with it. But let's assume that I personally live near London. I don't live in London, but I'm close enough to where I can basically say that I'm on the outskirts. You know, like 30, 40 miles away, basically. And okay, so let's say the CDN is there. Let's say the closest CDN is there. Okay, cool. Let's say there's one CDN in London. But, okay, that's great if I live in London, but let's say I live all the way up the northern end of the country, or, I, you know, on the opposite side of the country, then you start getting latency, and it's even worse. I mean, the UK is tiny. It basically fits in, you know, the, the corner of the United States. It's basically, you know, it's not even Texas. It's what it comes down to. So that's fine, but you can't have a CDN, for example, in the States on every single US state. It just doesn't work. You may have one in, say, the East Coast. You may have, say, one in the West Coast. You may have one maybe in the middle, maybe even a couple more. You might have, like, two, three, four. But if you're, you know, if one's really busy, you're going to get situations where there's, like, 150, 250 millisecond latency at times, and it's just not ideal. Obviously, it, you know that's that can be pretty bad that can be like you know up to a quarter second latency you know in milliseconds it's you know pretty bad it might not sound that much but when you're playing a twitch based shooter especially if one of you has like very little latency and the other person has like a lot of latency it's just not good um so i guess we're just gonna have to see things are really early right now i am personally hoping that cloud is utilized for some things but i don't like it right now for all that's just my personal opinion there's not really enough evidence either way i do think that azure technology is pretty cool but i just don't think it's going to be the equivalent of pretty much making up for you know lacking gpu right this second anyway i'm gonna get going hopefully you've enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care bye for now